Welcome to Eclectic American Roots, our weekly series on roots music of all kinds. I'm Christopher Burkhardt, and I want to thank you in advance for your generous donations today as we continue to help struggling musicians during this damn panic. Today we head to the Texas-Mexico border region where a rollicking and rambunctious combination of polka and traditional Mexican music was created 200 years ago. It's known today as Tex-Mex music. Now if you're like me, Tex-Mex also conjures up images of smoky barbecue, cheese enchiladas, and Lone Star beer. But for an even tastier treat, we are exploring the roots of Tex-Mex music today, and we'll learn how folk, rock, and country music combine to create the perfect party soundtrack. Tex-Mex is jaunty, folklorico pop, created by the Mexican-American populations of Central and Southern Texas. It originates in the marriage of the Conjunto and Tejano styles, collectively known as Tex-Mex. Think about this. Tex-Mex originated on the rancheros and in the honky-tonks of the Southwest, those dusty, smoky halls where the working class spent their off time. Since the beginning, the button accordion has been central to the acoustic Conjunto sound and was made popular by the early German settlers who brought their polka music to Texas. Add that to the oversized 12-string Bajo Sexto guitar, and you get a unique sound that has influenced modern musicians like that Tex-Mex supergroup, the Texas Tornadoes, and bands like Los Lobos, Rick Trevino, and the Mavericks. Tex-Mex's best known accordion players include Flaco Jimenez, David Lee Garza, and Josh Baca, among many others. It's a unique Texas-based music tradition that continues to evolve and thrive today. More recently, Tex-Mex has had some influence from rock and jazz, giving it a more progressive style and sound. So grab yourself a cold one, fire up the barbecue, and join us for some rollicking Tex-Mex music. Howdy, my friends. Big Sandy here. Excited to uh, share this week's video treasures as we explore the roots of Tex-Mex music. I have my drink in hand. I hope you do, too. A lot to cover, so let's, uh, let's just dive right in. For almost a hundred years now, the Jimenez family of San Antonio has played an extremely important role in the, in the formation and then further development of Texas Conjunto music. Um, learning from his father, Patricio, it was in uh, Santiago Sr.'s hands that the music really started to take shape and develop its, its own sound. Um, so let's uh, drop in on Santiago Jimenez right now as we pay tribute to the Jimenez family. My father used to play the accordion and a friend of his played the guitar. They just played just, just in houses, you know, they used to have dances. They don't, have, they don't use no amplifier, no nothing like that, just guitar and accordion, that's all. What were the dances like? Well, they used to have dances outside, you know. Sometimes they start 8 o'clock and uh, 7 o'clock in the morning they were still dancing. Quisiera ser tu jardinero y poder 
cosas que tienes en tu casa son bonitas como eres tú también. Si las riego las veces que yo pase, yo quisiera que fueras mi mujer. Soy tu jardinero y necesito el amor de una mujer. All right, that was Santiago Jimenez Jr. in that clip. And also in the clip before that, uh, that was Santiago Jr. playing along with his father. And uh, of the two brothers, uh, Santiago Jr. and Flaco Jimenez, uh, it was Jr. that stuck the closest to his father's traditional style of playing. Um, but that's not to say that Flaco turned his back on that traditional style. Uh, actually, he sort of held on to just enough of that tradition uh, while mixing it with other styles over the years. And, and that mixed in with his uh, like bubbling personality and devilish charm uh, ended up making him one of the most popular Tex-Mex artists uh, in the world uh, of all time, really. Uh, so uh, how about a double helping of Flaco Jimenez right now? I dig it. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
kilómetros viene la ciudad donde vives en Aida. Voy a ver si la puedo encontrar para ver si me da su palabra. Cuando luego llegue a la estación. Voy muy lejos, no pienso volver Porque voy a casarme con otra Presuroso llegué a San Antonio Pregunté por Zenaida del alma Right. 
pego. And all right, that was a little bonus I threw in there. Uh, watching that second Flacco clip uh, with all those record, records being pressed uh, got me a little excited. And I just had to put together that little tribute to some of the great record labels of Tex-Mex music. All right, friends, uh, a little break, and I'll be back in just a little bitty, bitty, bitty bit with some more great Texican music. Hey, everybody. It's time to meet our host today, the band leader of the Grammy Award-winning Los Tex Maniacs, prominent purveyors of the true folklorico Tex-Mex sound. You know, this music we're playing, it's called Tex-Mex Conjunto Music, and uh, came around the turn, of, the turn of the century. It was influenced by the Germans and the Czechs and the Polish that settled in Texas. And um, there was a couple of guys, one by the name of Narciso Martinez, along with Santiago Jimenez Sr., Flaco Jimenez's daddy, and uh, we're listening to the sounds of the Germans play, and um, we decided to pick up an accordion and play as well. But what we did different was incorporate the instrument that I'm playing here called the bajo sexto, which is a 12-string guitar with bass strings and guitar strings, and it was designed to take the place of the left-hand side of the accompaniment part of the accordion, because when the Germans would play, they'd accompaniment themselves something like this. So the bajo sexto took the place of that. Therefore, we created our own style, our own sound, and we called it Tex-Mex. And back in the days when the migrant farm workers were working the fields, and this was our means of entertainment, and uh, we'd have these barn dances and so forth, and uh, this is what it sounded like way back then. One, two, three. <laughs> Max had been playing in Albuquerque with his brother in the popular band Los Hermanos Baca, when extraordinary accordionist Flaco invited him to come to San Antonio and play Baja Sexto in his band. That beat, you know, that uh, when you hear it, you just want to go to the dance floor and, and start dancing. Max was a lifetime fan of Flaco, so he made the move. Flacco showed him the old techniques of the bajo sexto and encouraged him to play all 12 strings. The proper way to play a bajo sexto, you know, is with, it's got 12 strings on it. And so all, you know, they're there for a reason, you know, you got to play all 12, you know, you know. And some, some people take the strings off and they just use, you know, you know, so many, the, the bottom four or three or whatever. But, um, you know, Back when uh, there was no bass guitars and it was just the, the accordion and the bow, man, you know, perfect example. One of my idols was Santiago Almeida, was uh, Narciso Martinez, his bajo player, man. That guy was a, he was a rocker, man. He was rocking out on that bajo sexto back then, you know, because there was no bass, you know. There was so he was kind of like. <laughs> Max loved playing with Flacco, but he also wanted to keep the creative flame of the famed Texas Tornadoes alive in his own work when he decided to create Los Tex Maniacs in 1997. His concept was to keep the rock and roll dimension of his music going, while at the same time sticking to the roots of conjunto music, especially the accordion and bajo sexto elements. <laughs> Por mi madre y 
Yo te comprendo en inglés. The band became popular, toured the world, and appeared on countless stages promoting Tex-Mex music. Los Tex Maniacs Grammy Award came 13 years later in 2010. They won for Tejano Album of the Year, Orders, and Bylas, the second of two Smithsonian Folkways albums they recorded. The 18-song collection features a blend of polka, boleros, ballads, and western swing, drawing from the rich tradition of Tex-Mex culture and signaling a new social relevance and creative expansion. Today, Los Tex Maniacs includes Max's nephew, Josh Baca, on accordion. He's a protege of Flacco and helps continue Max's stated goal to do hip music that everybody in the world can relate to with the traditional conjunto elements without losing the cultural touchstone of true Tex-Mex. Ladies and gentlemen, San Antonio's Max Baca. Thank you, Christopher. Thanks so much, man. I'm very honored to be here, uh, Max Baca. And uh, wow, man, it's just, it's just great. Uh, we've got a great show lined up for you folks. Um, and uh, how about we start the show with a special video for you guys? Check it out. All right, folks, I'm Max Baca. Josh Baca. And we are Los, Los Tex Maniacs. Thank you, Richmond, for having us. Uh, and also thank you for the NCTA for uh, Having us out here at the Folk Festival, thank you so much. We really appreciate it. We're uh, those Tex Maniacs. We're going to play a little uh, traditional uh, Tex-Mex music for you guys. <laughs> Voy a cantar estos versos, aunque yo no soy de aquí. Yo soy puro mexicano, soy de San Luis Potosí. Caminando y caminando, he llegado a San Antonio. Me encontré muy buen trabajo. Y también con el demonio. Found me a little tejanita, and I fell in love with her. She was so bonita that I had to marry her. And she called me from Nuevo Leon She said send me some more money So that I can come back home Ya me voy para mi tierra, aunque pobre es mi nación, pero sí les aseguro que hay amando el pantalón. Ay, les dejo a mi tejana, no la pude soportar. Ay, que la torre y el diablo, a ver si la puede aguantar. Now I'm back in my homeland. Back where I was born One thing I know for sure now Been here where the pantalon I left her in old San Antonio Cause I could not afford her Ay que la torre y el diablo A ver si la puede aguantar 
she belongs to El Diablo You can have her, I don't want her anymore Um, uh, hey folks, uh, Max Baca from Los Six Maniacs, and I uh, want to introduce my uh, my special guest is my good friend uh, from Poteet, Texas, uh, one of the, uh, uh, probably the uh, the king of Tejano music, uh, Mr. David E. Garza, and the reason I say that is because he has single-handedly uh, uh, been in this business for so many years, and he has Grammys to prove it, and also um, he's been like a, what, what can I say, a launching pad for so many other artists that have made it in the Tejano industry, and it's due to David Lee Garza. On behalf of Max Baca, I'd like to introduce, introduce my very special guest from Poti, Texas, the one and only Mr. David Lee Garza. How are you doing, Max? How are you? I'm doing fine. Uh, thanks That's for uh, being, being, being a part of this, David. It, it uh, means so much to me. I said, well, there has to be... Uh, uh, the one and only Mr. David e. Garza, because uh, uh, in this neck of the woods in Texas, when it comes to Texas, David e. Garza is the man, you know. So, uh, no, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Thank Appreciate you the invite. Man. What you've been doing, uh, you know, now that this uh, pandemic's been going on, and I know, uh, I know, a while back, I guess about a month ago, we got together and we did uh, a surprise, or not a surprise, but a uh, uh, private show together, and that was really fun. But what you've been doing since then, brother? Well, just been trying to stay busy. Uh, all I can do is uh, hang around here, hang around the house, which uh, I, I enjoy, you know, because I've been doing this so long. I've been doing this for 52 years, Max, you know, and uh, when this pandemic, uh, when all this happened with this coronavirus and everything, I uh, put a stop to our, to our gig and everything, right? The last gig we had was uh, March the 14th, I believe. So... Uh, it was a break, you know, and, and even my mom asked me, uh, do you miss the road? Do you miss performing? And I, I said, yeah, I, I miss performing, mom, but I really don't miss the road a whole lot because uh, how long have I been doing this, mom? And she said, well, a long time. I said, yeah, 50, 52, 53 years coming here in December. So uh, uh, I needed this little break, man, and it, it, it's really, really relaxing, you know, to to not worry about, oh, man, I got to get back on the road on Thursday or Friday or Saturday or Sunday. So uh, just kicking back here at home right now, enjoying uh, enjoying what, uh, what I've been missing, I guess, you know, uh, is just great. Yes. Yeah, I hear you. Um, are you been, uh, have you ha happened to be working on, like, on your, in your studio or anything like coming up, new recordings or anything? Yes, yes. Right when, uh, when, the, when everything stopped. I said, you know what, this is a perfect time to go in the studio and, and start recording our next project. So, uh, yeah, we, we got busy in the studio and, and uh, actually finished the next CD that we don't have a name for so far, you know, just yet. We launched one single. Uh, it was a, a medley of songs that, that we did back in 1983 to 88 era when Emilio Navarro was the vocalist of the musical. We re-recorded four songs yeah. that he sang with us, you know, and, and we... We put it out. We put it actually out on a drop card, and we we've been you know selling that online and everything. And then, uh, like I said, we recorded the whole CD, so the rest of the the songs they're 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 done. You know, we're just gonna probably release two or three more singles, and then release a CD. You know, because uh, yeah. our our main sales are when we gig at the gigs. You know, and that's where we sell our, our CDs. The the actual CD, uh, of course, we're we're everywhere online. You know. And, the Spotify's and the CD babies and the iTunes and everything. But uh, a lot of fans that follow the musicales, uh, they want a hard copy. They want the actual CD. So, I mean, uh, the, the only way, like I said, uh, the, the advantage we had was when we were gig, that's when we would sell them. And right now we're not gigging anywhere. So we're going to hold off on that just for maybe two or three more months. Right on, right on. The conjunto uh, that that were just four piece bajo sexto accordion drums bass and then david lee when david when you want to explain david like uh you kind of you kind of branched out and 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 made your conjunto what they call progressive right it was you, you kind of you kind of get got more progressive and and in a little bit style, a, a modern style that was it's unique you had incorporated saxophone and, and somewhat of keyboard and stuff right 
Right, yeah, we started, like you say, a four-piece band, the Bajo Sexto and Accordion, and then uh, we got my cousin Oscar to start playing saxophone, and we got a guitar player. I always liked the way the accordion and the, the guitar sounded together, so we got a guitar player, and then later, later on, we added a keyboard, so we weren't, we weren't a conjunto anymore. I, I, we used to call our band a, a grupo, a grupo musical. You just released a, a single, right? A new single. Um, Correct. You, you want to talk about that? Yeah, this, this is a song off our, uh, the last CD that we've done. Uh, it's called Este Ame. Uh, it's a songwriter right here from San Antonio. He's actually from Peru, but lives in San Antonio. Acme Tustan, uh, he's an excellent songwriter. We recorded another cumbia of his, which we didn't, I, I didn't realize it was his cumbia, Mi Corazón Hace Tun Tun. So, uh, oh. and he gave us this other song, it's called Este Ame. It's our latest video, and I hope you all like it. Here it is. David Lee Garza y los musicales. Con el lucero de tus ojos, apúntame, da en el fondo de mi corazón, destellame. Destellame, con el escote de tu espalda, amor, destellame, con la abertura de tu falda, en lo que se ve, que el sol parezca alumbramiento sobre mí. albums the, with the bajo sexto with your dad on it man they, it really stuck out you could hear the bajo in there really cool man and uh, i've always been, been attracted to to that sound man you know david lee garza um, yeah we try we try to we try to actually blend both uh, bajo and guitar you know uh, the first band yeah. that i heard do that was like Punto Bernal. i saw an album and they had a bajo sexto and they had a guitar and, and i loved the way it sounded you know but of course we couldn't never duplicate Punto Bernal. you never right. can but you know, that, that I had a bajo and, and a guitar at the same time, and uh, I, I like that sound. So yeah, 
And then my dad, I have to admit that my dad's bajo sexto really stood out in a lot of the recordings, oh, as, yeah. as well as in the Cata records, and then further into the into the Capitol records also. Yeah, the sound was, uh, I mean, me, me as a bajo sexto player, your dad's sound was, was it, it had a real rich, thick sound to it, man. And it just, you could, it stuck out, you know. There's a lot of ajos that are thin sounding or crisp, you know, and no body or beef, but your dad had the beef, you know. He had the, yeah. the, the and plus he had the heart and soul. Yeah. Man, so. um, <laughs> I, uh, I was uh, honored to... Uh, to be a part of uh, one of your recordings. I don't know if you remember, I, uh, uh, we, you, I was on, on tour with you because Billy, his, your Bajo player couldn't uh, do the show. He was on vac vacation. So he asked me to sit in for the weekend and and then we're on the bus. And then I approached you, I said, hey man, David, I, I've recorded with a lot of artists, man, but I want to, I've never recorded with you, man. And, and then you said, hey, well, I'll be in the, I'm gonna be in the studio next week, man, come by. And I got to record with David Garza, which I'm uh, very honored on that. and. Uh, uh, we were nominated for Latin Grammy together. Uh, yeah, we were. We were sitting next to each other, man, in, in, at the at the uh, the Grammys. I remember, man, and and then uh, you got you got the Grammy, and I was I was happy, man. And uh, got up there. We, we were we actually we were all sitting together, huh? us and yourself and uh, David uh, was, uh, David David Farias uh, and Shaggy Shaggy Garcia. That's right. Shaggy and see them, yeah. So we're all sitting together, you know, little groups from Texas right there together now. I was just very blessed to, to have won that year uh, with uh, Just Friends. Yeah. It, it was a CD. Yeah. That and made I, I've got, now I actually got three of them. I, I, two of them I won with Joel Guzman. And uh, it was for Gritos. For Gritos y Acordeones, yeah. What a great and album. I, it was a cool album, man. Yeah, it was, it was a cool. So I, I won those. Those two in like within a year, right? Because the Latin Grammys and the American Grammys. So I won two within a year, and then it took me a while, and then I, I won this last one with uh, Just Friends. Right on, right on. Thirteen ninety two was one of the albums, one of my all time favorites. Uh, had just every song on that on that recording was a was a radio hit, man. Is there anything that you want to say? Introduce maybe introduce the next song and. Maybe say a uh, despedida or something. Or... Sure, sure. Thank you so much for for giving me the opportunity to come up, uh, and and be on this show here with you. This interview, enjoyed it, man. We we covered a lot actually in a short time. But uh, this last uh, this last video uh, that we're going to introduce, uh, we did it at really Nelson's uh, Willie Nelson's ranch, you know. And we were shooting that the uh, the horse uh, at the like the intro when I was on a horse and Willie Nelson comes by driving by, and I was like. Should I get off the horse? It took me about an hour to get on it. And I, said, uh, <laughs> and I just said hello from the horse. I said, hi, Mr. Uh, Mr. Nelson. Thank you so much for letting us use your place, you know. And he, he just smiled, laughed, and, you know, and, oh, you're more than welcome anytime. He didn't patch you a joint? <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. If he did, I didn't catch it, you know. I was on a horse. <laughs> I was holding on for dear life with both hands. Uh, yeah, no, so we enjoyed it. We enjoyed it doing it. It, it took us all the whole part of the day, man. It, to do it, but we we had a great time. My dad is on that video also. Oh, My man, uncle and another friend, you know, they're, they're, they're they, we, we took them as a step in there that around the, the bar scene. So we enjoy we enjoy doing this video. It's called Tonta. We hope you enjoyed it too. Thank you. Thank you, David. ¿Quieres perder todo lo que traes?
two hope you're with me listen valerio longoria was born in uh, 1924 in kennedy texas um, a curious young kid he took apart a harmonica put it back together just just to figure out how it worked uh, his father bought him an accordion he did the same thing just try to figure figure out the inner workings and th throughout his career he was constantly uh, modifying his accordion uh, always reaching for, for a new sound he was one of the first to add vocals to conjunto music, which was an, originally an instrumental tradition, and uh, he was the first to add drums. But here he is in the living room, just playing on his own, a man in his accordion. Thank <laughs> you. 
Once again, Valerio Longoria, in that time, in a classic meetup uh, between two accordion legends from two different generations. Uh, and if you didn't recognize them, that was Esteban, Steve Jordan, um, often called the uh, Jimi Hendrix of the accordion uh, for his uh, fiery technique and his experimentation with rock music and other styles. Uh, let, let's take a look uh, at Steve Jordan. Uh, at a little little younger age, uh, this time playing with Corpus Christi band leader uh, Isidro Lopez. And in, in this clip, I, I, I really dig uh, Isidro's laid-back approach contrasted against uh, Steve Jordan's kinetic style of playing. And I also like the back of Isidro's shirt. You'll see what I mean. <laughs> Y penando, pero por amor ajeno, pobre de mí, porque lloro y no me han de consolar. Pueden pensar lo que quieran, si yo sé que me condeno a la tristeza más grande. En el mundo pueda ya, como si andaras conmigo, tienes marcada la vida, como si andara contigo, quieren que yo me despida, ay corazón traicionero, me vas a comprometer, antes me harán prisionero. Que dejarte de querer Hace tiempo, te 
Pero se llegó el momento de perder. Tú tenías mucha razón, te hago caso al corazón y me muero por volver. Y volver, volver, volver a tus brazos otra vez. called the Hurricane of the Valley, Narciso Martinez, playing in a bar that I'd love to go to right now. We can't go to any bars now. But anyway, that's Narciso in, the, in his later days. Uh, he had been making records uh, since the 30s. And when World War II rolled around, uh, the lack of materials led to an almost complete shutdown of production of, of, of records. Um, but when the war was over, he, uh, Narciso was one of the first out of the gate to uh, resume making records. And that uh, really helped his popularity in, in the uh, playing dances. And, and not only in that region, but led to him touring uh, through uh, uh, New Mexico and e even into California. The Hurricane of the Valley, Narciso Martinez. Before that, Norteño favorites, Los Alegres de Teran. And their music was, was uh, very popular with the laborers of their region and the migrant workers took Los Alegres music with them, took the records with them uh, as they traveled looking for work uh, throughout Texas and then uh, eventually uh, throughout uh, a lot of the rest of the U.S. and e even today I find uh, some of their records uh, in secondhand stores. Interesting thing. Okay, a, a quick uh, pause for the cause for me and then I'll be back with the amazing Lidia Mendoza. If he brings you happiness, then I wish you all the best. It's your happiness that matters most of all. Wasted days and wasted nights. That I have left for you behind I can't remember when I didn't love you There was a time I 
thought you felt the same Holy one You'll never know How much I love you so And I'll be there Before the next Teardrop falls Now let's look at the roots of that super group The Texas Tornadoes But first is anybody going to San Antonio? As producer of this show, I get to play you my all-time favorite Texas Tornadoes video, and here it is. Man, I'm tired of being on the road, man. I want to be home. I'll tell you what, thinking about going home, I'd like to go back to my mama's grocery store and oh. sit on the back porch. Yeah, yeah, that's what I miss. Yeah, yeah you know what I miss? What? Tomales. Tamales. Tamales. San Antonio tamales. Did I hear something about tamales, guys? Yeah. Hey, let's go. Come Andale. on. Doug Som, uh, he used to come in and buy baseball cards. And right across the streets of Washington, we used to sing in there for everybody that was them clothes. When I'm whipping down the neck of my shirt, like I ain't got nothing on. Well, I'd rather fight the wind and rain than what I was fighting at home. Is anybody going to San Antonio or Phoenix, Arizona? Battle of the band? Yeah, 59, man. That's right. We you, set up right there. You oh, sang that. Why, why, why? My hit, man. Well, the Annie goes a truck with the U.S. mail. With people writing letters back home. Well, tomorrow she'll probably won't be back. But I'll be just as gone. Is anybody going to San y aquí estaba tu casa más antes, Flaco. Sí, fíjate que mi papá y yo hacíamos música cuando estaba bien. Pues, ¿Qué memorias no has de tener? Memorias bastantes. La nostalgia. Nostalgia. I just think we're lucky down on now, though, man. We forgot to do that. We're still here being the Texas Tornadoes. Oh, that's definitely. I think we're one of the blessed cats for having us. But sometimes yeah, it takes a little bit of talent to be lucky. Yeah, it could be. You're right. Especially my talent. Well, no, no, your talent. That's your talent. Well, that's <laughs> By now, it's pretty obvious that the Texas Tornadoes had a lot of fun in their careers. It all started with Texans Doug Som and Augie Myers. Close friends and bandmates since high school, they created the famed Sir Douglas Quintet, who many people thought were the part of the British invasion of rock music, even though their drummer only spoke Spanish. She's About a Mover would be the biggest hit of their entire careers. Ladies and gentlemen, lords and ladies, Hullabaloo proudly presents the Sir Douglas Quintet. Hey, hey. 
Mr. Poe told you people assume that the uh, Sir Douglas Quintet is from England. But I have a surprise for you. Believe it or not, these fellows are all from my home state of Texas. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. I bet we even fool Minden. Anyway, we'll be right back with Vicky Carr and Herman's Hermits. They'll come back, yeah? <laughs> but wait, was that the original title? We asked keyboardist Augie Myers to come on the show today to reveal the original name. When we did She's a Batter Mover, that wasn't the original title. The original title was She's a Body Mover. But in 1965, you could not put that on. on yeah. On, wow. You know. Check it out. <laughs> During their rock and roll stardom, the quintet was invited to play on TV for Hugh Hefner's Playboy After Dark. Augie tells us about that experience. You've got the original group back together again. I wonder if um, tonight we could get you to do a number for it. Sure. We'll have to right now. Mm-hmm. Douglas Quintet is back. We'd like to thank all you beautiful people out there for all the beautiful vibrations. Teeny Bobber, my teenage lover, I caught going last night as I'm a final one. You're such a groove. There was a there was a a time where y'all did some shows with the uh, uh, with uh, Hugh Hefner from Playboy. Can you talk a little bit about those? How did those come about? Oh man, well he liked the, he liked the quintet. He saw us somewhere in L.A. and um, he invited us to his house. We went to his home and he had a big party. I mean, Johnny Carson was there, Dean Martin was there. I mean, most of the big stars and we everybody snuggled. And I ain't gonna go on what what went on and everything anymore, but. Uh, it was a, it was it was it was different, and he said, "I want y'all on my TV show." So we went on his TV show, and we did, did he, what show. Was it? Did they have it at the at the mansion, or they hold it there, or the? What was we it went at, to the mansion to the to the party he had, but we did it at the studio. Back in those movie. days, television sh shows lasted five days. You know, we did a what was it a Glenn Campbell show? We did a Playboy After Dark. And then there was uh, Smothers Brothers. They had their show, and the Grateful Dead was on somebody else's show. And that 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 Friday after every, all of us, he was all wrapped up and everything. Out of all of shows, there were like five or six shows. They had a big festive food and everything. And the Grateful Dead spiked everything with acid. I mean, everybody was out of it. Ooh. It was fun. <laughs> I guess I don't remember after that. Augie and Doug would later return to chart success with the Grammy Award-winning Texas Tornadoes, a rowdy conjunto rock and roll band that they modeled on the Beatles with Augie Myers on Vox Organ. The two reached out to Freddie Fender and Flaco Jimenez about joining forces in 1989 when Warner Brothers was looking to create some kind of a super group. Well, we, you know, let me tell you something. When we started out, Doug said, man, Warner Brothers wants to put a group together. He said, who do you want to get? And I said, well, I don't know. He said, let's get Freddie. Well, Freddie's been a friend of me and Doug since we were 15 years old. And then he got him and I said, well, why don't you get Flaco Jimenez? And then we did. We went to San Francisco to Slim's. And we were only going to play Friday night. And Warner Brothers showed up. And the people around the corner, all the way around, waiting to get in. 
We sold a show out, and they said, well, y'all play Saturday, and we did. Now, Freddie didn't know what to do. He brought his own band. And Doug said, no, man, you got to get on the stage with us. We're putting a new band together. He said, no, but though, man, I got my own band. You know, but <laughs> that, was a, that was a tough one there, man. I'll never forget that because Freddie, uh, you know, uh, Doug, Doug already had the chemistry down, man. You know, to have the, the Ernie Derwawa, Speedy Sparks, Louis Ortega, and those guys as a unit is amazing, you know. And then me on Bajo, and then, of course, the four principal guys. Uh, <laughs> but Freddie, you know, he was he he was he wanted to be loyal and faithful to his band, his you know his touring band that he played Vegas with all the time and stuff. And uh, but uh, you know it just didn't fit with the tornado sound, you know. And um, so uh, <laughs> so I remember at a time it, it got it got to the point to where we had two bands playing it on the band. Man. We had two drummers, two bass players, you know. Uh, Freddie had a, a guitar player and a keyboard player. We had uh, uh, he, Alan Rich was playing with Freddie, um, and then uh, and then uh, Louis Ortega. So we had like six guitars at one time. We had two basses going, two drum sets. We did a couple of shows in Las Vegas, and the and the sound engineer, he quit. He said, I, I can't handle this. <laughs> <laughs> the original Texas Tornadoes first played in 1989 at a concert in San Francisco, billing themselves as the Tex-Mex Review. They enjoyed that collaboration so much, they decided to stick with it, and the Texas Tornadoes became more successful together than they ever would have solo. And Freddie had a bus that, that leaked diesel. And <laughs> time everybody got off their, the after time his band got off the bus, and I was on it a couple of times. We were either dizzy, we smelled like diesel, and then people would stay about five feet away from us. You know, that I thought we were going to, they were going to catch a fire, but it was cool. <laughs> it was fun uh, while one, it lasted. <laughs> no wonder I slept all, all the time on that bus. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Really? It was, they had a gas leak, man. Yeah. They all knew that the genuine bond they felt in their music could probably be taken to another level. The Texas Tornadoes were asked to perform all over the world, such as at the presidential inauguration of Bill Clinton, the Montreux Jazz Festival, and they also made regular appearances at Farm Aid. They won a Grammy Award in 1990 for Best Mexican American Performance. Oh, the Bill Clinton inaugural ball we played, man. And, uh, Oh, I mean, it was everybody was there, man. They had, they, they had to shut the uh, the uh, the hotel down because Clinton was having dinner downstairs, and uh, and Augie was next to Flacco's room, and me and Flacco were jamming in the room. You know, after, you know, nobody could leave. You couldn't leave because you know he's having dinner, and uh, and so they said, sorry, we can't. Nobody can leave the hotel. Can't leave the elevators, but we're gonna have dinner and room service free. So Flacco, man, his, he didn't want. A steak dinner, man. He he ordered like uh, a couple of cases of beer, and so um, before you know it, all the Linda Ronstadt mariachis were in Flacco's room, and and we're all jamming. And then uh, Los Lobos guys comes in, and and Augie was trying to sleep, and then Augie just opened the side door, and he goes, "The hell with it, man." <laughs> but uh, I woke up at, I woke up at, at three o'clock in the morning. Four trumpets going <laughs> at four o'clock in the morning. So I walked in the next room to flock and I said, hey man, come on, there's all this beer bottles. I said, okay, let me put some clothes on. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, and so then Flock would uh, Augie drink a beer with us and man, it was it's just uh it was a, a hell of an adventure, man. You know, getting to meet the Almond brothers, getting to meet uh um, you know, um so many so many bands, man. Um Willie Nelson got up and sang with us. At the inaugural ball, of uh, Charlie, uh, Charlie Pride. Pride was there. Yeah, he sang uh, uh, that song that Doug used to like to sing. Uh, is anybody, anybody going, going to San Antonio? The group's infectious, party-ready sound blended country, early rock and roll, Mexican folk, rhythm and blues, and blues, and whatever other roots music crossed their paths. But everybody just calls it Tex-Mex. If you got the dinero. Just flash some cash, we'll buy some gas, off we'll go. Bring all of your pesos, I'll supply all the bases. We'll go and buy some cerveza, ride up the mason, watch the sun go down. 
If you got the dinero oh, I got my Camaro Just flash some cash Buy some gas Off we'll go Blanco Blanco People sometimes refer to their lyrics as Spanglish because of the mixture of English and Spanish in the same song. And how about those creative lyrics? Listen to this one written by Augie Myers. Their self-titled debut album was released in 1990 in both English and Spanish to rapturous reviews and also sold pretty well, reaching number 25 on the country charts. Hi, man. Nice what are you to saying? Be, I look nice a little, a little crazy no, in this outfit. Oh, you look great. That's you. That's I'm wearing you. this outfit. Yeah. <laughs> Where, where's me. Howdy? I'm, okay. <laughs> I'm wearing this outfit for a specific reason because yeah. we have a group here, the Texas Tornadoes, and they're sitting in with us for the entire evening and they right. are four of the prime proponents of the Tex-Mex sound, there each of them okay. a star Call in his own right. right. now. Let me start in the front on the left. Ladies and gentlemen, the great Freddie Fender Freddie, is nice with to us see you. How are you? on guitar. In the back, on the accordion, the number one Tex-Mex accordionist in the world, Flaco Jimenez on the accordion. Flaco Jimenez. Nice to see you. Flaco, how are you? On the far right in the back, if you can get to him, on the Vox Continental Organ. This is the guy who played organ on all the great Tex-Mex records, and you're going to hear some of his stuff later on. It's the great Augie Myers on the organ. I, I thought that I'd be Augie. And in the middle of those two, I don't know if you remember a little record called She's About a Mover, a record called Mendocino, a record called When the Rains Came. This is Sir Douglas of the, of the Sir Douglas Quintet, Mr. Doug Somm, yeah. ladies and gentlemen. How are you? After long and successful uh, individual careers, our next guests got together a year ago and uh, made this album. Right here it is. It's called Texas Tornadoes. Ladies and gentlemen, please say hello to, do, do I name them again? 
Doug Som, Augie Myers, uh, Flaco Jimenez, and uh, Freddie Fender, Texas Tornadoes. All right, kids. Mm -hmm. In 1996, the band toured together, but they also had their own projects to keep them busy, as Augie tells us. When the movie Tin Cup came out in 1996, the Tornadoes earned a spot on the movie soundtrack with this original song, A Little Bit Is Better Than Nada. late 1998 concert at Antone's in Austin was recorded and released the following summer as Lie from the Limo, Volume 1. Unfortunately, it would prove to be the only volume as Doug died of a heart attack in late 1999.
it was a wonderful 10 years on that I was in the band after Doug died, you know, it wasn't the same anymore. Um, but we still toured, you know, without Doug, we, we, ha you know, we used a couple other guys, uh, uh, a couple of guys from Nashville and, and we toured a little bit, but it, it just, it wasn't the same after that, man. So let's celebrate the music of the Texas Tornadoes and let's continue to enjoy the new music from today's artists who are keeping the rockin' Tex-Mex tradition alive. Here are the Mavericks with Flacco. My next guest won a Grammy this year for Best Country Group. Their current CD is called Music for All Occasions. They're performing tonight with, I want to say, with Flacco Jimenez. Please welcome the Mavericks. <laughs> folks uh, well welcome back and uh, my next guest is the one and only grammy award winner country superstar my good friend mr rick trevino how you doing rick i'm doing good man doing good just trying to stay out of the heat it's hotter than heck out here in austin and um uh it was 106 earlier uh, here in san antonio you know personally we're doing fine it's just uh you know it's hard to it's hard when, when you as you know when you're not out there playing for the fans and when you're, when you're not Cause that's all I've been, that's all I know is, is that's all we've of, done. Yeah. Is yes, my work for the past 30 years is 
play shows and make a living and tour and record and things like that. And, and, and it seems like maybe, uh, when we did super seven, I guess is when, when, uh, you, you, uh, you, you sang in Spanish and you, well, you I mean, you mean on your other country stuff, you sang in Spanish too, but, um, that's when we kind of, you kind of more did a, more of a Mexican roots or Tex-Mex project was in super seven. And then, and, and after that, even on your new recordings, I know that, uh, uh, you have some songs that you've sang in Spanish and, uh, and you're really kind of grasp, uh, grasping your, uh, your roots, your cultural roots. Do you want to tell, talk a little bit about that? Yeah. I mean, it's, I, I, I was fortunate. And then at the same time, not fortunate to have a really big, big moment in, 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 uh, when I was very young, I was probably 20 years old when I got, uh, uh started recording with uh, Columbia, out of Nashville. And it was, it was, it was great in the sense that it was a wonderful opportunity and we were able to string a few hits together and we were able to, uh, to, to get on the map, uh, in the, uh, you know, mainstream country format. It almost seemed like in hindsight though, that I was, was, uh, lucky in a sense that I didn't really have, uh, my, you know, I hadn't quite hit my stride as a, in hindsight, as a true, you know, songwriter and I was just starting to write songs at the time um, and so at at the same time it's looking back it's like wasn't really didn't have the identity and I didn't really wasn't really saying the things that I wanted to say just didn't have the artistic and uh, I wasn't really in my wheelhouse 100% like I am right now in terms of songwriting but uh, yeah. it was a great place to start and it was a great place to uh, yeah. you know to woodshed and to uh, pay my dues. And so uh, towards, you know, through the nineties. And then of course, super seven was around 99, 2000 is when I really feel like I kind of departed from the, you know, expanded is, is a better way to put it. it and meeting you guys and meeting David and Caesar and uh, Steve and, the Los Lobos guys. And then of course, reading, meeting Raul who produced the next two records, country records for me, uh, in 2003 and through 2007, uh, that, you know, it, it's, it really, it's, it's still evolving in my, in my opinion, I guess the thing, the, the thing that I feel is that my story, I'm still writing my, you know, my story and which is kind of cool. It's, it's, uh, it's, it, it's, I feel artistically like, my juices are flowing and, and I'm, I'm, I still have lots of things I want to say. Um, yeah, man. But yeah, so the super seven was after the nineties country stuff. Super seven was it around 2000 or so. And then I also had two more country records with Warner brothers, Nashville, and then, um, kind of broke off on my own and started writing and making records here in Austin. So that's what I've got. That's what I've been doing the past, you know, 10 years or so. I remember the time where I actually would, was playing in your band. And then, and then now you've, you're uh, sometimes a special guest with, with my band, and it's just a it's a beautiful thing, and we can do that. And, and um, I, I remember uh, back you were collaborating with Raul Malo and writing some songs and stuff, and um, fantastic songs, man. Like Olivia, I remember uh, you, when you guys well when you wrote that song, and then and then you recorded it, and uh, just uh, and now. Um, uh, we, you know, we find ourselves sitting in a hotel room with Flaco, you know, and and then you come up with this amazing song called "I Am a Mexican Man," which is a powerful uh, identity song, man. That that uh, I thought I think it's a fabulous song. Man. We were in uh, doing a, doing a like a Super Bowl festivities when that, when it was in Arizona. We were at this. We were playing the the Super Bowl week, and we did our show somewhere i forgot where it was but uh it was an outdoor kind of festival and then that night we we had a few beers in my hotel room with you and flaco and um, i played the song and pretty much flaco produced the song i mean he basically did it right there in the hotel room because i was playing it more a little bit more like a ranchera and yeah. flaco pretty much slowed it down and said let's play it a little bit more like a bolero and so we kind of slowed it down and uh he said because he wants to really hear those lyrics yeah. And so I just remember, so I just took that recording that we did in the, in the hotel room and just took it to the studio. And that's how 
I recorded the song. I uh, have the honor to have uh, recorded my Bajo Sexto on this uh, special uh, video of Rick Trevino. And Rick, you want to introduce the song? Yeah, this is the uh, video that I shot and recorded here in Austin, Texas, uh, called I'm a Mexican with special guest, seven-time Grammy Award winner, Flaca Jimenez. My dad got me into formal piano lessons when I was about five years old. And I took, uh, probably took piano lessons till I was in college, um, pl classical music. But my dad, he was always expressing this idea not to just do your piano lesson because he said, you're going to get bored. He says, you know, play songs that you like on the radio and learn them by ear and sing to all the artists that you like to sing to and, you know, don't just do, because you'll get tired of, take, of taking piano lessons if you do that. Who are your um, Tex-Mex influences, Rick? Because I know, um, uh, besides, you know, um, of course, your father and, uh, mm -hmm. and the Neto Pettis band, of course. And uh, besides that, who, who were some of your you know, Tex-Mex influences? Well, the, 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 the very first memory, especially here in Austin, was I remember my dad taking me to see Little Joe. Of course, that wouldn't be considered as Tex-Mex, but it's, it's, I mean, I don't know if you would define it precisely as Tex-Mex music, but it is definitely. Oh, I, would, I, would, I would say 100% so. Yeah. 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 Little Joe. Yeah. So Little Joe was my very first kind of experience watching uh, 
seeing him at the Austin Aquafest. Um, he had he, that, he had that sweet. Well, he's always had the horn sections and all that. Yep, that's what. And yeah. my dad, and he and I, he and my dad had a pretty good have a good rapport. And of course, meeting uh, Ruben Ramos in the Revolution when I was uh, first just started um, playing in, in in town here in Austin uh, in the clubs, I uh, would see Ruben play at Dessau Hall. Got mm-hmm. to meet him and and, and hear him, and uh, uh, it was it was it was it's 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 pretty amazing when you see how great the musicians are that play in these big band Tejano Tex-Mex bands, uh, great jazz musicians, uh, great vocalists, um, the some of the arrangements of some of those, uh, especially like uh, Ruben's. What, what's what's Ruben's uh, album? That he has Paloma Negra. Uh, he does the mariachi. Yeah, yeah. Yes, that's a and, great album. Um, yep. There was a, there was an album that uh, we I, we both collaborated on one of his uh, albums. It might have been that one or maybe one after that. And uh, and I know you sang uh, <clears throat> you sang uh, uh, what was the name of that song? Uh, anyway, you sang a duet with Ruben. Yeah. Still, I was immersed. I was able to. You know, do songs with Freddie Fender, do a duet with him, uh, being able to play with Flocko, being able to kind of uh, have my first recording experiences with uh, at Las Manitas before the Low Super Seven record hit. That was a mm-hmm. that was a big kind of a game changer for me, being able to uh, to do those shows at South by Southwest at Las Manitas with you. I remember, yeah, yeah, Doug Psalm, uh, Augie. Uh, you just never knew who was going to walk into that little place, you know? <clears throat> yeah, yeah. It was such a cool, cool... Uh, it was kind of the what spawned uh, Los Super 7 was the the uh, Las Manitas. Did you feel uh, did you feel a, a bond with Freddie when you guys were, were in the studio singing together? It was... I, th- I, I was watching you guys, and it felt good, man. It, you know, so... Yeah, I mean, I, I always felt like there was a kind of a father-son relationship there. A very, he kind of had this paternal vibe... And I was looked up to him as a mentor from day one. I just was in awe, Freddie. Uh, and uh, he he just kind of took me under his wing. Uh, there were some pr- uh, Spanish uh, dialect issues out end of the language, like a lot of the a lot of the guys that were there. Um, but Freddie would say, "Hey, you you, you know this one word here. You got to make sure you say it like this." And he never said it in a way that was condescending or anything, you know. Yeah, it's kind of coaching you along, I guess. Yeah, coaching me along and stuff, and uh, and yeah, I really I always felt very very comfortable with Freddie, and he was always, like I said, very uh, mentor, kind of had a mentor uh, vibe around me. That's cool, and you know, Freddie, they, they, you know, some say he's the king of Tex-Mex music. You know, he that was a thing with Freddie. His voice allowed him to to enter different genres. You know he made it in the pop scene. He made it in the country scene and yeah. Tex Mex scene. And, and that's where I see you, man. You can sing whatever, man. I've, I've heard you sing, uh, uh, some of the, uh, South America style of singing, uh, uh, you know, when you did, uh, um, uh, one of the super seven albums, I guess. Yeah. Canto. Say- Canto was more of a tropical type. Record. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, pan Latin. <clears throat> it wasn't really a Texas sounding record. It was more pan Latin kind of Cuban record. Right. <laughs> You're good, brother. All right. There it is. One and only uh, Grammy Award winner, country superstar, extraordinary, extraordinary voice, Mr. Rick Trevino. Man. Thank you, Rick. Peace.
again and uh, ready to dig even deeper into Tex-Mex roots. Lidia Mendoza, born in 1916 in Houston, Texas, played guitar as a young girl in local restaurants and barbershops, playing for tips, had a family band that went out to San Antonio, Texas to audition for a record label. In 1928, they were signed to the OK record label. And a few years later, uh, Lidia was signed to her, her own record contract for Bluebird Records. That was in 1934. Uh, her music was uh, really grounded in traditional Mexican music, but as a Texas-born Mexican, she was a huge inspiration to uh, other artists who had similar backgrounds uh, and gave a strong sense of identity to so many uh, as being a Mexican-American. Uh, let's listen now to the, the legend Lidia Mendoza. Bueno, en esta noche voy a tener el gusto de cantarles para ustedes la primera canción que llevé yo a la grabación Fue allá por el 1932 cuando grabé yo esta primera canción, la cual sigue viviendo, como dije hace unos momentos, en el corazón de todos ustedes. La canción de Mal Hombre. Era yo una chiquilla todavía Cuando tú casualmente me encontraste Merceda, tus artes de mundano De mi honra el perfume te llevaste Luego hiciste conmigo lo que todos Los que son como tú con las mujeres Por lo tanto no extrañes que yo ahora En tu cara te diga lo que eres mal hombre ruines tu alma que no tiene nombre eres un canalla eres un malvado eres un mal hombre a mi triste destino abandonada Entablé fiera lucha con la vida Ella recia y cruel me torturaba Yo más débil al fin caí vencida Tus viste a tiempo mi derrota mi espantoso calvario conociste te dijeron algunos voy a salvarle y probando quien eres te reíste mal hombre tan ruin es tu alma que no tiene nombre eres un canalla eres un malvado eres un 
mal hombre One of my best friends is a fellow originally from Temple, Texas, named Little Joe. He's the seventh son of a sharecropper. He grew up picking cotton in the Texas cotton fields. He makes his country and Mexican music better than probably anybody I know. And the fact that he's a Texas boy probably has a lot to do with that. But I think it's because he's real people. And real people are fun to be with and fun to play music with. So would you please welcome Mi Amigo, Little Joe, and La Familia. about that? Tejano Hall of Famer, Little Joe, introduced by the man, Willie Nelson. Going back to 1955 for Little Joe, uh, over the years he's performed as uh, Little Joe and the Latin Airs, Little, Little Joe y la Familia, a solo act, um, and always a class act, Little Joe. And now, Freddie Fender. Oh, this this next little clip or series of clips is something different. Uh, a Freddy supercut, I guess you could say. Let's have fun with Freddy. I'll let it speak for itself. Um, Tell us a bit about your recording and writing. There's not that much, there's not not much, not much to say. <laughs> uh, I've done some writing and I've done some recording. Uh, you know. That's about it. <laughs> he, wrote, he wrote probably the first real Tex Mex song because he's standing here. But, <clears throat> yeah, the song I'll be here called Old Holy One. It came out in 1959. We always talk no, about, no, about, about each other. Now. Yeah, it came out in 59. Yeah, and we're all religious song. Who's, who's going to sing it? Who's little white it? boys? Who's little white guys? Who's going to sing it? Holy One, you'll never know 
How much I love you so I guess you'll never The reality will know Only one be mine It was that kind of shit. Bah, 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 bah. But anyway, yes, please, please. play the accordion and sing Mexican songs, uh, Chicano songs, and then uh, I got into country music and I started blending my English with uh, Chicano, you know, and uh, also, you know, songs from the 50s, uh, the rock, and uh, I came out with what you may call a Tex-Mex uh, rockabilly. The uh, first record I ever cut was back in 1956, then I had wasted days and wasted nights out in 59, and it wasn't until 15 long years before I had my first big hit, Before the Next Teardrop Falls. If she brings you happiness, you know I wish you both the best. It's your happiness that matters most of all. But if she ever breaks your heart, if the teardrop ever starts, I was in my car on my way to a recording session when I heard Freddie Fender's voice for the first time. I had never heard anything like it. But if he ever breaks your heart, if the teardrops ever start, I was playing the guitar on one track, the bass on another track, my son was playing drums, and I was playing rhythm on another track, and I was doing voice on one track, and uh, voices on another track for harmony and to make it sound like a band because I didn't have the money to, to, to afford a band. Lo más bueno pa los dos. I just pulled over the side of the road and listened till the song was over because I was afraid I'd wreck if I didn't. As soon as I got to the studio, I called the station WSM to see who was singing it. I went out that afternoon, bought it, and I practically wore the wax off of it from then on. After, before the next year drum falls, you know, things began to change. Now, if I want to, thank God, I can put a T-bone steak right next to my pinto beans. Yum, yum, yum. <laughs> No se imaginan qué lugares tan bonitos que conocemos en nuestra gira. Me dan más que mucho, sin que gaste macho. Panchos Tex-Mex Buffet. Ay, ay, ay. Goodbye, yo, me gotta go, me a mile. We gotta go for speed road down the bayou. My eat bond the sweetest wine, me a mile. Son of a gun, we'll have big fun on the bio. Keep a dope out of nowhere and the place is buzzing. Keep a country behind by the dozen. Rest in style and go hog wild, me and my go. Son of a gun, we'll have big fun on the bio. Jump a line of trumpet, find a peely gumbo. For tonight I'm gonna see my machado meal. Big guitar, feel for jar and be gay, Son of a gun, we'll have big fun on the bayou. Voy a ponerle su jardina pancha, mama. Pero que sea de flores coloradas, mama. Pa' que se piquen toditas las casadas, mama. Solo los tocos de pancha, no más. Everything gonna be all right, now get me a piro. I'm gonna get me all the fish on the bayou. Save my mind to buy one watching needles. Son of a gun, we'll have big fun on the bayou. 
jambalaya, crop is pine, I feel a gumbo. For tonight I'm gonna see Mama tell me, be guitar, feel for jar and be gay. Son of a gun, we'll have big fun on the bio. Flaco Jimenez. He's written a new hit song called Blue Jeans, a teasing number about Mexican Americans who want to be part of the great American dream. How about that? Uh, I had to squeeze in a, a little more flaco there. Hope you didn't mind that. Oh, I dig it. Uh, I was just told that I have a little more time. So let's do this. Uh, I'm going to go grab a couple of tapes and I'll be back in a flash with some 70s and 80s uh, VHS recordings uh, recorded right off the TV of some Tex-Mex rarities and dare I say it, a couple of Norteño songs. Okay, I'll be right back. So my next guest is Mr. Hey Baby, Kippin' to himself, the one and only Mr. Augie Myers, living legend, man. Augie, how you doing? Hanging in there, Max. How you doing? I'm hanging in there considering I'm doing miserably well. And throughout your career, you've played so many different styles of music, man. You've played country, played rock and roll. Um, so how does a rock and roll cat uh, playing from the Sir Douglas Quintet come to play an accordion because you you and and you you know you become what they call the king of the white boy polka man so how does it how does the rock and roller come from rock and roll to, to picking up an accordion and, and actually playing tex-mex uh music well my my, my dad mean? was a refrigeration man he traveled all over texas and i used to go with him sometime and he used to tell he always called me boy he said boy he said you play that kind? he always listened to nothing but conjunto music on the radio, he said, "You play that kind of music, and you're going to go somewhere." And I said, "Well, I'm serious." And I said, "Well, Dad, you know, I'm playing piano and guitar, you know, playing country music and a little bit of rock and roll and stuff." He says, "But get you an accordion." That's a cool thing about Augie, man. About what you do, Augie, is every album that you record, it's not covers; it's all original music that you write, man. And um, so, props to you on that, man. Um. And I know that, you know, you influenced uh, me and my brother when I was back in, uh, in, in New Mexico, living in Albuquerque. And, uh, you know, when you wrote, Hey Baby, Que Paso, uh, so me and my brother recorded it. And because we, we did it, man, it was a cool tune and it was really popular. And, you know, uh, but uh, yeah, man. So I guess throughout the years, you, you managed to, to do something really cool that nobody's ever done, man. And um, and that's 
you know, with your Tex-Mex roots, you know, okay, you played accordion, of course, but then in a sense you played bajo too, because you managed to, to get your Vox organ from the rock and roll thing and, and, and incorporate it with like the Texas tornadoes and, 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 and recorded it in these polkas and stuff, man. And, and it's, and you're pretty much playing like a, what a bajo would play. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, you, 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 you know, you're, you're doing the chants and stuff. Like I say, like, she's about a mover. That's a perfect example. You know, it, it, I would say that's a, a rock and roll Tex-Mex rock and roll song because of the way you're, 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 you're flamping the, 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 the Vox organ, like a bajo, jank, 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 you know? So man, what, what a, that's a brilliant, <laughs> it's a brilliant concept, man. You know, how many albums would you say, or CDs or records would, would you say you've recorded on your own? About 17 and there was no middle man. Yeah. Except my, except my wife, you know, but I yeah, did a lot man. of albums, you know, with Bob Dylan, Tom Waits, Glenn Campbell, uh, Sweethearts to the Rodeo. Uh, I can name some more people, but I just, you know. Yeah, that's cool, man. And um, one of the one of the cool albums that that I uh, that I like is uh, was uh, White Boy was a great album. Um, also, uh, you, that was a blues well, album. It got nominated for a Grammy, but a guy named Babyface won the album. Everybody said, "Oh yeah, it'll never go." White Boy trying to play polka music. Two, and one, when people check, tell one. me it'll never go, that's when I go. One, two, one, you know. two. Yeah. Everybody one, listen to a different check, drummer. One, you know? two. So, um, so one, what's what's in store now, Augie? What's two, what's one, I know that uh, you're working check, on a new album. One, two. And I was honored to be a part, little little bit a part of it. And uh, what? So, uh, what, when do you plan to get that? Well, recording the, me and Flocker got this album we're working on, and you just you you put your vaho on, and you're going to go back in the studio. We want some more stuff on you. You've done it, and then we're going to be through at that. And I've got a project I'm doing with just me and the piano, no bass, drums, and guitars, just me and the piano, violin, and cellos. It's a, oh. my original tune, real, real nice laid back album. And then I've got nine tunes on my new blues album, and I've got eight more polka albums, and I've got like six or seven country albums to do for the next album. You know, so wow. it's all the studio's been closed. Joe just opened up his, so you could go on there. But I'm doing different projects at different studios, you know. So, but every, a lot of studios been closed with all this epidemic. And he, he, I got another song, and my wife don't like me to do it. Call it says, uh, you used to be on my mind, now you just on my get on my nerves. <laughs> you used to look so fine, but you're running out of curves. Um, hey, baby, que pasó? How, how did that come about? I'll get Big hit, oh, man. It was a big hit. Well, I, I was dating this lady, uh, and, and she said, why do you play that Mexican music? I said, because I like it. She said, I don't. I said, there's a door, sweetheart. And she left, and I didn't see her for like four or five months, and it's kept I so come out. It was number one in San Antonio and all around. She called me. She said, all my friends are listening to that song that my kids are singing it. Everybody's singing it. Can I get a copy? I said, yeah, you buy it at Walmart. She hung <laughs> up on me. <laughs> that's awesome <laughs> so uh okay cool <laughs> so yeah um so we uh we did this video uh, with que Paso, um and uh and i guess we'll go ahead and uh we'll go ahead and play it for the folks out there uh, listening in uh augie myers you can introduce the song well this is a song man that me and max did at at his little studio called uh the max baka and the maniac studio uh, I always call Max a uh, Rocka Baka. And anyway, it's called Hey Baby Kept Us So. Hope you like I hope you enjoy it, man. Thank you for your time. Appreciate it. And be safe. Hey everybody. This all I'm, I'm Augie Myers. And I'm here with the Lost Tex Maniacs. And I'm gonna do this song for y'all for everybody because we're all in this together. One, two, three, four. Hey baby, get my soul.
right, Big Sandy back again with our bonus round. I've got a three pack of TV delights direct from VHS. And to me, there's something something charming about the uh, low key production or the no key production values of uh, of these performances. Okay, let's get into it now with a group from uh, a town near Los Indios, Texas, which is re right down at the, the the very bottom tip of the of the state. Uh, here's uh, Freddy Gomez y los Dinamicos.
All right, a little mix to go with the text. I had to throw in a couple of uh, Norteño bands because I like them. And because I had those tapes. That was Ramon Ayala y los Bravos del Norte. Uh, still very popular throughout Texas. And before that, from Nuevo León, Los Cadetes de Lenares. And... That'll do it for me here. Uh, if I were you, I would stick around to the end, though. Um, I'm going to do that. Thank you for tuning in here today. Uh, thanks for your donations. And if you haven't had a chance to do that yet, uh, this might be a good time for that. Um, thanks to Max Baca uh, for hosting the show and to all, all the, the guests that we had today. Another great eclectic American roots. Uh, I'll see you next week, friends. Thank you, Christopher Burkhart. And... Um, We'll see you around. Y'all take care of yourselves. Bye for now. That's our show, folks. Hope you enjoyed learning all there is to know about Tex-Mex music yesterday and today. You know, we really appreciate all those great donations you guys are sending our way. And we make sure it gets to the musicians. They're the ones that don't have any gigs anymore. They're the ones that matter. And that's why we put on these shows, Eclectic American Roots, to support our musician friends. For more information on this show and other shows like it, go to Stellar Jack's channel on YouTube. Stellar Jacks, J-A-X. If you are interested in live music as well as streaming music, we continue to put on live shows on a regular basis at Campus Jacks in Newport Beach. For more information on those shows, just go to StellarShows.net. So until next time, remember, keep those masks on tight, and we'll see you down the road.
touch of acid. Wow. Oh. 